Internet. My name is Abby and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program on Wings. Handler has almost finished his marathon and he is now returning back to his lace lander and while he was running he had all the time this great view out to a wall and yeah this is pretty convenient because now after he returned back to space he will uh, rendezvous with his crewmate and then they will fly out to wall where they will stay the rest of the Drew expedition until the return window has opened up so that they are able to fly back home to Kerbin. And yeah, so uh, this was a uh, nice foreshadowing for him. And now he's arriving back home to his, or back to his lace lander. And I like this piece of technology. It's just amazing. And well, let me just give you a short overview of, uh, um, about this, this spacecraft. At first, we have mounted the heavy science parts under the fuel tank. So just after takeoff, we will ditch them to lose a little bit of weight. Then, of course, we will lose, uh, use the uh, rapier engine and air breathing mode, and that's why we have these two air intakes and these two outer fuel tanks. And as soon as we reach a certain altitude and the engine switches over to uh, rocket mode, we will use the last drops of fuel out of these outer fuel tanks, and then we will ditch these outer fuel tanks and also the um, the air intakes and then we are losing some more weight and finally when the inner fuel tank is running out of fuel we will switch over and ditch the rapier engine so that we can use only the small fuel tank mounted directly under our lander can and we can use these two uh, Rocomax 2477 engines and finalize our orbit insertion and do all the maneuvers to have a rendezvous with um, his crewmate. Okay, at first, as a safety measure, he has to repack all the chutes just in the case that something uh, goes wrong and he has to uh, descend back home or back to the surface of lace. Okay, let me repack them. Okay, very good. Now he can return and he can at first store the surface sample from lace oceans and also the EVA report from uh, lace oceans. Now he can retract two of the solar panels and then he has almost finished his uh, takeoff preparations. Now he needs to enable his fuel tanks. And the last fuel tank on top. Now let's make sure that the that the staging is correct. At first we will use the uh, rapier engine in air breathing mode. Well done. Then we will ditch the science parts. Also good. Then we will ditch the outer fuel tanks, also nice. Finally, we will ditch the rapier engine. Okay, this is everything, uh, everything is in order. The sun has risen behind Jewel, this is also cool. Now let's have a short look. We are down here, the interplanetary stage is over there. So I think we should wait a little bit until the stage is maybe around here, because I'm not quite sure how long it will take to uh, achieve an orbit again with this method. And in this case, yeah, let me make sure that I'm arriving at the right uh, moment, or maybe we are a little bit ahead or a little bit behind this um, spacecraft, so then we have to do some orbital maneuvers to rendezvous with it. But yeah, uh, I hope this is then the right way. Let me at first bring the thing a little bit closer. And... Okay, let's stop here. And yes, after... After liftoff, we will turn towards Jules, so we will fly eastwards, and then I hope this will be a successful flight back to space. And I think, okay, let me now retract the ladder. I will enable SAS, and I will also enable RCS, because we are standing here on a slope, and I think I can use the help of the RCS to make sure that my spacecraft is not flipping over. Okay, and now let me enable the engine. And okay, now at the basically the moment of truth, let's throttle up and let's start working against the gravity of our slope. Come on, come on. Ooh. Okay, yes, good, good, good. Okay, very good. So now let's aim for the 90 degree mark. Okay, this was close. This was an interesting liftoff. So we can now disable RCS. We do not need it anymore. We can retract our landing gear. 
And Handler. Handler is at least flying, at least. This is a success. This is very good. Okay, let's turn around a little bit more to the 90 degree mark because I like to accelerate a little bit more. And what is his current altitude? He has already achieved an altitude of uh, 2000 meters. So now it's the time to ditch the science parts. They are falling down and we are already 4 kilometers away. So, science parts are gone. And this means we lost a little bit of weight. We should be able now to accelerate a little bit faster. And well, goodbye science parts. And we can now see again. This was the uh, dune we climbed up at first. And then Handler uh, went down or run down all the way down here to the shoreline. And here, here, he. Uh, did the server sample at the shoreline and yeah this is pretty cool and this is his achievement and this is this is really amazing he did an amazing job okay now I like to fly a little bit I don't want to have such a uh, strong angle of attack because I like to speed up a little bit while I'm uh, still raising my altitude and while I'm still climbing up and I need to have a view, as you can see down here, at uh, my outer fuel tanks, so that I ditch them in the right moment. And okay, we are still gaining altitude, we are still speeding up, and this is pretty important because we need the speed. And uh, the more speed we can gain inside the atmosphere and air breathing mode, the more fuel we are saving. And this uh, as well is a key factor for the landing mission here on days because I designed this lander extra light because I wanted to land it with only four parachutes and in this case here I had to make sure that uh, it's pretty light and coming with the rapier engine and only a tiny amount of fuel was uh, to me the best idea I can use to to return later on back to space. Okay, um, Currently everything is looking good so far. We are nicely climbing up, we are gaining altitude and velocity by a good degree. And this is pretty amazing. We have a beautiful view to Jewel as we are getting higher and higher. Okay, and I have, and we are already Okay, now we switched over to rocket mode. You can see how fast now the fuel, the liquid fuel, is depleting out of the outer fuel tanks. And in a short amount of time, so now they are out. Whoa, 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 whoa. And they exploded. Okay. So we got rid of them. What are we doing? Okay, we need to stop right now because we are already having an apoapsis of 109 kilometers. This is really good. Let me just add a marker up here. Okay, Handler, is any was something damaged by the explosion? I don't think so, I just think uh, we blew up a little bit the... some parts of our outer fuel tanks. But I don't think that uh, something was damaged. This is good. Are we here in a different biome? Let me just do a short creep report from Lace Upper Atmosphere. Okay, we haven't done something like this. Let me keep this. Uh, can we do uh, maybe a uh, temperature scan? Lock temperature while in space near Lace. Okay, we have already done this. Now we are already in space. No longer upper atmosphere. Okay, this is sad. This is sad. Okay. Now we are ascending and it's a little bit easier. I designed this and I tested this on Kerbin and on Kerbin I needed even the most inner fuel tank and right now I do have some fuel left. So I think I might be even able to... Wait, I think I will ditch this and just before having a periapsis so that I get also rid of this weight because I do not want to carry around the rapier engine, but until this point it can be quite useful. And yeah, I tested it on Kerbin and the Edward was working well. Um, monopropellant. We do have enough monopropellant, okay. That was working well, but Kerbin is a little has a higher gravity, has more atmosphere, a higher atmosphere. So uh, after I managed to do this on Kerbin, it was clear that I will be also able to do the return flight here at, at Lace.
Okay, still two minutes. I think I should do a short time warp to get a little bit closer to our current epilepsis. And... Okay, only 20 seconds. Let me just use this and let me extend this arc so that we are barely having an... Okay, this is quite a significant burn we need to do. Okay, at this point we wouldn't be in orbit and so we are still able to ditch the rapier engine. Okay, now let's throttle way up. And the thing is really powerful as you can see. This thing is really good. And we are almost out of fuel with this. This is, this is perfect timing. This is really perfect timing. Okay, let's let's use a little bit of its fuel to continue on. And what it's empty, it's empty, okay. This is perfect, this is so amazing. Okay, now we can ditch this. And goodbye, this thing will disintegrate in the atmosphere. Now we can switch on these two out of your tanks. And now we can throttle way up and we can finalize. Now we are in space, we are back in orbit. Very good, handler. You did an amazing job. You returned back to orbit with uh, after your landing on Lace, and this is just amazing. Okay, now where are we? We are a little bit ahead of the of our. Okay, this was the wrong button. I just wanted to set it as my target. Okay, let's switch back. Switch back to our Lace lander. Okay, let's try this again. I want to set it as a target. Okay, out there. Let me see, what do we need to do when I set up a maneuver node over here? Then... Okay, let me just set up a maneuver node over here. And what would happen if I just reduce this? Then I wouldn't be able to arrive there. Okay, I think at the periapsis we will do a tiny burn to raise just a little bit our epoapsis. Like this, very good. And then let me just see here at the epoapsis when we are doing a small burn. Okay, this is not good enough. So I think we need to do something like this. And then there we would be, oh, 15 kilometers apart. Why? We have, oh, we have, uh, we should at first fix the inclination of our orbit. Okay, we can do this over here. Well, wait. Let me at first raise just a little bit the epoapsis. What is our current epoapsis? It's 135. Okay, uh, I think I will just eyeball it. I will just set a maneuver node out here. So in five minutes we are at our epoapsis. Let me speed up a little bit. There's our rapier engine. Okay, now we are out. Oh, not epoapsis, periapsis. I meant the periapsis. Okay, I'm so confused because I'm so excited right now. Let me now do a short burn to raise my periapsis maybe 260 kilometers. Okay, let's stop it here. Now our next point is the um, descending node. I want to fix it a little bit. And... Okay, now we have no inclination anymore. This is also good. After we have done this burn. And then we can start thinking about preparing the rendezvous. Handler Kerman is doing an amazing job. He is really a well-experienced Kerbonaut. Let me yet now do the burn. And this thing is really light and it, rem uh, it reminds me a little bit at my um, Eve Lander. Yes, the Eve Lander was constructed a little bit in a similar fashion. And now look at this. We have already or almost a rendezvous. So when I'm doing here, what do I need to do? I just need to speed up a little bit. No. Can I? How can I? 
At which point, when I'm doing here a burn, 1.6 kilometers, do I need to 2.2? So let me just reduce it, 1.9, 8.9, 4.3, 9. okay, I think, 2.8, 1.3, okay, 1.3, in 6 minutes. In 6 minutes we can do our next burn and then we are getting pretty close already to our driving section and this is amazing that we can return already there. Now let me just do the quick burn. Unfortunately we are currently in the shadow of Lays. And okay, finished. Very nice. So, uh, wow, only 300 meters away when we are arriving up there. This is cool. Let me just set up a maneuver node. Okay, very good, very good handler. Now we can do a longer time warp so that we are able to arrive at our target. And sunrise again, pretty cool, jewel rise again. Now we are getting closer, only five minutes to go. Two minutes, one minute, okay, only one minute to go, let me close now. Arm the maneuver node, and we are only 4.4 kilometers away. This is cool. Let me already start a little bit reducing our velocity, and by doing so, I can even align a little bit more our trajectory. And now we do have a separation of 100 meters. This is pretty cool. Let me just do a second burn over here, and now we are still at 100 meters. Okay. Now we can do a little bit of a time warp to get a little bit closer. Okay, so now we need to do a burn to slow us down. I like to slow us down our approach velocity currently to 10 meters per second because we are already pretty close. Okay, and let's see, our docking port is down there. We are arriving at a good position. This is really amazing. This makes the docking pretty easy. This is great. Okay, we are only 72 meters away, 60 meters away, 50 meters, 40 meters. Handler, you are doing an amazing job and... Okay, now I think I should switch to RCS because now the spacecraft is pretty light and so it's pretty easy to do too much of a maneuver or to change too much our trajectory by just a simple burn. Okay, let me disable RCS. Let me at first try to kill all of our movement. I hope I'm able to do so. Okay, let's do a very gently. Okay, well done. Now, at first, we need to rotate our spacecraft a little bit around so that we are aligning ourselves with the docking port. And now, let's fly down there. And I'm I'm so amazed, and I'm also a little bit still excited about the the lift off because, as you have seen, it was really necessary to use the RCS, and I. I was glad that I noticed this before we had the catastrophic outcome that in the end we were just flipped over or something like this. And yeah, so I'm glad that I managed to do so because otherwise, yeah, it was really necessary to use RCS. And uh, well, you saw, you hopefully have seen how this, this, this spacecraft was turning around as I started the engine. Okay, now we are only a few meters away and it's not very easy to control the spacecraft because it's so light that even a small uh, thrust with the RTS thrusters is increasing or decreasing the velocity by a significant degree. But I think we are on a great trajectory. Now I can disable SAS and RCS. And now the docking ports are taking over and Handler has returned. Handler has now successfully returned. Let me just enable SAS. Er has successfully returned and now we can shut down these engines. Shut down engine. 
And I also like to, uh, let me just see, can I access this fuel tank? I hope I can. I like to shut down this fuel tank as well, because I like to save this fuel. And yeah, over there we do have our target wall, and we will fly up there at maybe as a uh, next thing we will do. And yeah, this is pretty cool. Handler has now returned to space, he has returned to his interplanetary uh, stage, and can we just see... Okay, we are already far away from our first landing site, but nevertheless, this was pretty cool. And yes, now he is back. And before I end this episode, I want to do something I thought of, and this is the Bob Expedition. I like to uh, focus view on Bob, and I like to switch to the Bob Expedition. No, not focus jewel. Uh, focus Bob. Now let's see again. I want to have this one. Switch to Bob Expedition. Okay, very good. Because, well, here at Bob Expedition I came up with a great idea than the last episode. And, well, at first I like to have a simple maneuver node to bring us or to help us leave the sphere of influence of Bob. And... Now, okay, a little bit... I just want to leave the sphere of influence of Bob, okay. So, now, the next thing is, I like to set Lace as a target. Okay, very good. And now, I like to use the descending node. And here, I like to do a second burn, so that I'm getting down to Lace. But, unfortunately, I'm ah, directly at the opposite side of Lace orbit. But what happens when I'm... Yes, I can shift around. This is cool. This is really cool, and over here, periapsis, uh, can we get this maybe a little bit better? 429 kilometers, this is great. What is this? A lace periapsis of 201 kilometer, and it would even change their inclination. This is great, this is great. Uh, but then I would orbit around the wrong direction of lace. But maybe I can wait. Let me. This way I would still orbit, I guess, around the wrong direction around Lace. Um. Maybe I can fix this while when I am getting closer to it. So yeah. And uh, what, where, or what are the costs for these two burns? This burn is 468. This one is 60. So it would be around 530 meters per second. I think we would have enough fuel to do so. And so we would come down to, a, to an encounter with Lace. And this would be really helpful because down there we could have a rendezvous with the, with the dual supply mission. And this would hopefully help us to return back to Kerbin at some point. Okay, I think this is a great idea. I should really do this. And, or should I do the burn in a direct way from Bob? No, I think it's better to leave, to leave the sphere of influence of Bob. So, okay, we have set up a maneuver node. This is pretty good. And I think we have a plan how we can refuel the thing. This is amazing. Now, I like to control from here. And, yes, I think I will start off. I like to do the burn at first. I like to leave the sphere of influence of Bob. Okay, we can't warp faster than 50 times. Okay, Dodo is enjoying. Dodo is now aware that we found a solution to rescue him and to enable him so that he is able to return to Kerbin at some point. And I think this is pretty important for him. So, okay, only 14, 12 minutes, getting closer to the maneuver. Down there was our first landing site. This is also cool that we are coming across this uh, this great position, we were down there, and Dodo explored Bob a little bit. Okay, now 30 seconds to go, let me now look for the maneuver node. Okay, it's directly on the opposite side. And there we are, I hope we do have enough fuel to do this. So let's keep fingers crossed that I'm able to do what I like to do, and yeah, I think it should be possible. 
I think it should be possible. Okay, now we are doing our burn and stop right now. And, well, let's close this maneuver node. And, yes, we are leaving Bob. We are leaving Bob in 6 hours and 28 minutes. And then we will start orbiting around Jewel on our own. And at the descending node, we will set up a new maneuver node. But I will do this after I left the sphere of influence of Bob, because right now, uh, well, there might be a small change. Okay, Dodo is a little bit sad that he is now about to leave the small moon of Jewel, but uh, yeah, at some point he has to do this, and okay, so uh, Dodo is leaving Bob, and we are at the end of today's episode, so I hope you like uh, what I did, and I hope you will be joining me in the next episode. In this case, until next time, my name is Abby, see you!